Welcome to Turkey 101. I'm going to show you everything from buying that turkey to serving it up to your friends and family. First things first, how do you know what to buy? A general rule of thumb is to plan for one pound per person. Now this will not yield you any leftovers, but that does incorporate the weight of the bone in the turkey. I like to figure one and a half to almost two pounds per person because I like leftover turkey. That means if you're cooking for six people this year, you'll need about a nine pound turkey. Fresh or frozen? Well, I'll tell you, frozen turkeys are going to be more readily available. I personally think it's fine to get that turkey that was frozen soon after it was harvested. According to Butterball, a turkey is still great frozen up to two years. So whenever they go on sale, go ahead and stock up on your turkey. Although you do need to remember that you need that freezer space. Now that you've invested in that frozen bird, how do you thaw it out? The safest way is to thaw it out in the fridge. Be sure that you place it on a rimmed baking sheet or in some sort of vessel in case any of the juices start to leak out as it thaws. Plan ahead because this process can take up to a week. If you didn't plan that far in advance, you can also thaw it in the sink a lot faster. You could set your turkey in a large bucket or pot leave it in its original package, or you can just simply plug your sink up and let water, cold water, slowly run over your turkey. As the sink or bucket fills up, the water will need to be changed out about every 30 minutes. The sink method will take about 30 minutes per pound for the turkey. Remember to leave it in its original package. One more thing in regards to thawing your turkey, it is okay to cook it while it's still a little bit frozen. Don't tell anyone I told you that. It's just gonna take longer and you might not get as crispy of a skin. Let me tell you how not to thaw your turkey by leaving it sitting on a counter all day and night. This gives way too much opportunity for bacteria to start growing and your turkey can become contaminated. How can you tell if this turkey has gone bad? Common sense, people. When you open this package, if there is a strong smelly odor, go get a new one. Another way to tell is if it's super slimy. Now it's time to prepare our turkey and the number one question right now is to brine or not to brine. So what is a brine? A brine is a salt-based solution that is supposed to provide us with one result, a more moist turkey. So what happens is some of the salt gets absorbed, it breaks down some of the muscle tissue, causing it to contract less when it's cooking. Now that we've covered that, do we brine wet or dry? So I'm gonna show you both ways and then I'll tell you which one I prefer. All right, so we're gonna take some water and we're gonna dissolve a bunch of salt with a little bit of brown sugar. And at this point you can add in whatever flavorings you want. I like a head of garlic, a couple bay leaves, a little bit of clove and some peppercorns. Once your salt and sugar have fully dissolved, you'll pull it off the heat and let it cool completely. All right, once your brine mixture has cooled completely, you pour it into your bucket. You could also do this in a large pot. I'm gonna pour it over ice water. Another good tip is that you can finish thawing your turkey in the brine. Add a little more water. All right, once your turkey is submerged, you wanna keep it cold in the refrigerator or keep it iced down in a cooler for at least eight, but no more than 24 hours. And don't forget to rinse before you roast. Now on to the dry brine. Now this process takes two to three times as long as the wet brine, but you can look at it as a way to get your turkey prepped days before and not have to worry about it till it goes in the oven. You do you. If I was going to brine, I would prefer a dry brine over a wet brine. It's a lot more simple and less cumbersome than the wet brine. We're going to start with salt, brown sugar, sage, pepper, dried thyme and granulated garlic. Give that a good mix. Now a dry brine sits in the fridge once you've coated it for one and up to three days. And there's no need to rinse the dried brine turkey. Put a little on the inside and then you'll want to get under the skin to get some of that brine directly on the breast meat. Then evenly coat the outside. We also need to go ahead and tuck the wings here. Once the turkey is lightly coated, we'll just set it in the fridge, uncovered for a couple days, and then it'll be ready for the oven. Remember, no rinsing before roasting. At the end of the day, when it comes to brining, I just think it takes up too much room in my refrigerator that I don't have a couple days before Thanksgiving. Also, 
I'm worried about the way it could affect the texture. So to me, it's just not worth it. All right, we've covered all the basics. I've shown you the wrong way to do it, the right way, and now it's my way. Okay, so my turkey has thawed and it's ready to be prepped. I don't rinse my turkey. And this is how just the standard ones come in the grocery store with this little plastic thing holding everything inside. I'm gonna take that off. All right, we pull the bag of goodies out of the inside. You wanna save that if you're thinking about making a flavorful gravy. And now I just like to get it as dry as you can before we season it. First things first, I like to flavor the cavity with your aromatics. There's no right or wrong way here. It's just whatever you feel like putting in the cavity. Today I'm gonna do a little bit of carrots, onion, a little bit of apple and celery. This part stuffed inside the turkey does not usually get eaten. Um, it will be edible, but this is really just primarily for flavor. All right, so I'm going to make a salt and pepper little mixture so that I can dip my hands back and forth in it. So I'm going to season the inside of the bird with salt and pepper. And you wanna get in there and rub it around. But I'm gonna stuff it now with our aromatics. I'm also gonna stick in some herbs. So I've got some thyme a little rosemary. So now it's time for the outside. Got some softened butter, and I'm just gonna add in pretty much the same herbs. Okay, I'll add in a little salt and pepper. All right, now we mix it up. Once you've got your butter ready to go, you're gonna tuck some under the skin right above the breast. That way it will kind of baste that breast meat as it cooks, and then you can kind of spread it out. I am gonna tie the legs together. I don't always do this, but I feel like these need to be tied together. All right, now we have our pretty package ready for the finishing touches. You want to make sure the skin is very dry. Okay, so you've got your wings here. We want to tuck them under. I like to use a rimmed baking sheet with just a rack set inside. That way the heat gets all around. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of olive oil on our dry skin a generous but even coating of salt and pepper on the outside. Now it's ready for the oven, but now comes the thermometer part. You may choose a leave-in thermometer or an instant read thermometer. I happen to like a leave-in thermometer for a turkey because I don't open and close my oven, and better yet, I don't baste this turkey, okay? Once we set it in there, we can enjoy our day. Okay, I'm gonna set my temperature to 160 degrees and I've got the alarm on. So this will notify me when the breast meat is 160 degrees. Because there is less meat on the dark meat side, by the time the breast meat reaches 160, this should be right at about 180, which is perfect. We're gonna stick our probe thermometer into the thickest part of the breast, being careful not to touch any bone. You wanna be sure that meat surrounds the thermometer. We're gonna cook this at a high temperature for 30 minutes and then reduce the heat until it is cooked through. It'll take another two to two and a half hours after that. So 450 to 500 degrees. If you have a hotter cooking oven, you'll wanna to go to 450. Um, if your oven's normal or cooks on the cooler side, go to about 500. And listen, we're not gonna open that oven. No basting required. And now the most important lesson is to leave it alone. Let this rest for at least 20 to 30 minutes to let all those juices redistribute and stay inside the bird before we carve it. What's a turkey without my favorite part, the gravy? Okay, now a lot of people skip this step because they're saying, oh, I don't have one of those roasting pans that you can set right on the stove. Well, I'm gonna show you how to make it in a saucepan, but still using that liquid gold from the roasting pan. So we're gonna start like you would any gravy, just melt a little butter. I'm also gonna use those insides from the turkey. I've boiled the neck along with all those little goodies in the package, and you can skim off those impurities that rise to the surface. To our butter, we add about the same amount of flour. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the dripped fat that came off of our turkey. Let's see if I need any more flour in there. Still looks good. So I'm gonna heat my pan back up in the oven so that I can deglaze it. That's going to give us all the flavorful liquid that we need. So we've got a flavorful roux going on here. Got the pan nice and hot. Now I'm going to deglaze it by adding a little bit of wine. 
just a little bit, enough to scrape off all that goodness. Okay, you know how much flavor is right there. Now at this point, I'll strain out some of these solids here so that they won't be in my gravy. Liquid gold going into my roux. And now we'll add some of our strained giblet juice. If you want to skip this step and just use chicken broth or turkey stock, that's fine too. All right, time to carve. Listen, no fancy tools needed. Once again, a good old sharp chef's knife will do the trick just fine. You want to undo your little twine where you tied the legs together. First thing we do is remove the legs. The good thing is they kind of have a guide, so they show you kind of where to cut. So you just follow along the lining of the leg. Now you've gotten the drumstick and the thigh off. You'll turn it skin side down. The leg and thigh usually have a natural a line that runs through that shows the natural break. So that's where you'll run your knife along to separate the two. Then you've got your drumstick and your thigh. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, now we will remove the breast and wing. You'll find the line in the center. All right, so follow along, staying as close to the bone as possible, and pull the bone in the opposite direction of the knife. I just ripped the wings off so I could snack on them. And then just slice up the breast meat. And this is all if you're just trying to be fancy. In my family, we just leave the turkey whole sitting on the buffet, and people just kind of carve off what they want as they go by. Okay, this right here is not garbage. This is the perfect base for turkey soup. If you're gonna platter it up, I like to do so as simply as possible, and I just add in some fresh herbs. If that doesn't spell Thanksgiving, I don't know what does. And there you have it. I hope I've given you all the tools that you need to make your best turkey yet. For more videos like this, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Happy Thanksgiving. This guy still has quite a bit of feathers on him.